Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Living in North Atlanta. My name is Matt. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing and following us along here on the journey of documenting everything about what it's like to live, work, and play here in North Atlanta. Today we are talking about the top five best suburbs in North Atlanta and we're going to get into it right now. All right, so as I said, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as tap the bell for the notification so you don't miss a single video about what it's like to live, work, and play here in uh, North Atlanta. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, uh, anything at all, you can leave it down in the comments. All of our contact info is also in the listing uh, description here of the video itself, uh, in the video description. So you can always uh, reach out to us that way, email, text, call, whatever is most convenient for you. You can always set up a Zoom call as well if you're thinking about making a move to the Atlanta area or if you've stumbled upon these videos and you're in the Atlanta area already and you're like, man, I don't live in one of these suburbs. It would be great for, for me and my family to move to one of these areas. Uh, we can help you out with that as well. We are listing experts as well as buyer negotiation experts. So we can help you out with that. But we want to get right into the video today. And every single year, you know, all of these uh, little studies and, and research come out about the top, you know, four, five, 10, 20 areas in a particular, uh, you know, community or state or city. And so today we want to talk about all things uh, as it relates to uh, the, the five top suburbs here in North Atlanta. So I'm just going to rattle them off real quick and then tell you and show you on the map here uh, where each one of these are, because if you're not from here, you probably don't know. But uh, the first one, Alpharetta, we've covered that pretty extensively here. Decatur, Johns Creek, Peachtree City, and Sandy Springs. Now, four-ish <laughs> of the five of these are all in North Atlanta. So when I say North Atlanta, we talk about, you know, the uh, pretty much like the northern arc here, if you will. Um, 285 being the perimeter on the north side. So 20 kind of runs, Interstate 20 runs right through the middle of the city. If you go north of that, we call that North Atlanta. So I'm going to show you on the map here all of these different areas real quick so that you can kind of get you uh, acclimated to where we're talking about here. Um, but again, Decatur kind of over here uh, in the on the uh, east side of, uh, of Atlanta. And then, uh, of course, Sandy Springs, where I uh, live, work and play here right in the middle. Um, Alpharetta up to the north. We've covered a ton about Alpharetta, different price points. Um, the schools, the, the community, the downtown area, we've kind of driven you through as well. So if you've missed any of those, you can look down in the playlists here. There's a whole playlist dedicated to Alpharetta. Um, but then we've got Johns Creek uh, out here to the east of Alpharetta and Roswell. Um, Duluth, of course, over even further east, another great suburb that's also uh, mentioned regularly on these lists as well as Peachtree Corners down here just a little south of both of those. But again, just want to kind of give you a quick lay of the land. So again, 20 running right through the middle of the city here. And then, um, you know, you kind of move uh, further north up 75, 85, and then a 400 directly to the north. Um, and again, Sandy Springs being right here in the middle of those five. So Peachtree City is the only one that's actually south, at least on this list, um, that you'll find uh, down here to kind of like the southwest-ish corner. Um, you see it right down here. A lot of folks from Delta, the airlines, obviously the airport being on the south side of the city tends to attract people to the south side of Atlanta. But um, today we're really going to focus on our specialty, which is north of Atlanta. So again, 20 through the middle of the city. And then as you move further up north, um, again, you run through Buckhead, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody, and get all the way up to Alpharetta, which again, we've covered a ton about. Um, but really, we wanted to kind of unpack what make these you know, the top rated cities in North Atlanta. Like why, how do they get these designations? Um, you know, what information is used? How do they use it? Um, I think it's really valuable to understand, you know, beyond why someone just says, this is a great place to live. Truly what, you know, what do they take into account here? So of course, in order to be a great suburb, you know, you gotta have affordable housing, which affordable is a relative term. Let's just make that abundantly clear right off the bat here. Um, when we say affordable, we're really talking about compared to the rest of, say, the United States or even the rest of Georgia. 
And so certainly there are areas around Atlanta and all over Georgia that are significantly more affordable than some of these suburbs. But I think, you know, it's most interesting to compare these to each other and talking about the cost of living, uh, the availability of affordable housing. And certainly we have our challenges with that here in Atlanta, especially over the last two years, as more and more people have chosen to make Atlanta their home. And a lot of these suburbs are certainly on that list, but that's really where we start, affordable housing. The second thing that we take into account is schools. So, you know, whether it's public school or private school, we really wanna see a plethora of options when it comes to schooling. A lot of people uh, prefer to go the religious route when it comes to, um, you know, private schools here in Atlanta. And, and there's a great diversity of Jewish schools and Catholic schools and Christian schools and just about every uh, denomination that you can imagine has their own footprint, if you will, here in Atlanta for that, um, you know, segment of religious based private schools. Obviously, there's a ton of other private schools that are based on technology and, uh, you know, environmental learning and stuff like that. Um, but schools really are like the next, um, you know, factor that we take into an account. And especially as it relates to, um, you know, public schools, a lot of people uh, will move into these areas strictly for public schools. And so, especially as we talk about Decatur having their own school systems, um, Alpharetta being in North Fulton, as well as, um, you know, like Johns Creek and Sandy Springs being in North Atlanta or North Fulton, um, you know, you really start to unpack and understand that, you know, these, these entities have their own system in place. And they are, of course, funded by the taxpayers, funded by the taxpayers. So really, that's like the second thing that we like to look at when we're talking about what makes a great suburb. Uh, the third thing that we take into account is recreation. So parks, um, you know, recreation, sports, uh, an opportunity to get out and engage within the community, especially, you know, if you have a young family, uh, the soccer teams and the basketball teams and the baseball teams, that really brings a whole different element to a great suburb. And of course, you know, in the city, it's a whole different thing. And, you know, there's positives and negatives to both sides, but really, you know, when you're talking about these suburbs, that's why people moved out of the city and into the suburbs. They wanted more of a work-life balance. They wanted to raise a family, so on and so forth. And that's why two of these three are related to kids and, and recreation. I mean, that's really why people move out of the city. Uh, the, the fourth thing that we want to mention um, is amenities. So parks, again, recreation is a big part of that. But uh, country clubs, you know, tend to be a big part of that as well. And so people often look at, you know, what other things are there are they accessible to um, or what can they do when they're not living uh, or when they're, when they're not working, uh, when they're playing? What can they go out and do? What what options do they have uh, ahead of them? And so for me, you know, I really like to look at all of this holistically. You can't really look at one. Um, you know, you've got to look at everything. And the, the combination of all these things really, I think, adds to. So we're going to dig right into Alpharetta again. We've covered Alpharetta uh, extensively, not just with real estate and what you can get for, you know, what you spend here, but obviously driving you through the downtown uh, Alpharetta area, which has seen a huge transformation. Um, just want to dig a little bit deeper into a couple of the things that we just talked about here specific to Alpharetta. So uh, Ameris Bank, the amphitheater up there, has a ton of concerts, a ton of live events that go on all the time, literally year round. In fact, especially through the summer, there are plenty of opportunities to be uh, at the amphitheater and big national and international names come through that uh, facility. It's unbelievable, actually. So if you're ever visiting, definitely check their concert calendar because you may be able to grab a great show while you're here visiting as well. But uh, the Wills Park uh, Equestrian Center as well, if you're into horseback riding or um, you know, have been around horses your entire life, or even if you're just starting out, there's anything from lessons all the way up to full competitions. Um, and again, just another way to engage in the community there as well. Of course, plenty of jogging and walking and bike paths and all that type of stuff. Big Creek Greenway has really transfer, uh, transformed, um, you know, how people in Alpharetta and Milton to the north, Roswell to the south, really uh, engage with that greenway there. Uh, and of course, being 12 miles, there's there's no shortage of activity along there. Uh, but of course, you've also got the Alpharetta Farmers Market that uh, you know occurs every Saturday and just really gives everyone an opportunity to come out. Of course, meet with local farmers, get locally sourced um, you know produce as well. So that's a really cool thing. But um, the shortage of restaurants, I mean, I literally could spend an entire day 
and in one video going through the restaurants, not just in downtown Alpharetta, but really throughout all of North Metro Atlanta, because we have some phenomenal restaurants all around North Atlanta here. But anyway, we'll move into Decatur. And again, we talked a little bit about affordable housing. The average home price, or excuse me, the median home price indicator is almost $400,000. Now, relative to the rest of Atlanta, that's affordable because our new average is high 400s. So anything less than 400s is what we would consider affordable. And again, it's a very relative term, so take it for what it's worth. But the median rent indicator is also about $900. So, you know, it's safer than like 77% of United States cities, which is a massive deal. Um, but it's perfect for singles, for young professionals, for families, for retirees. I mean, really that affordable housing appeals to everyone. And so that's why Decatur made this list. But in addition, the restaurant, as I said before, the restaurants we could talk about in Decatur are phenomenal. And again, if you're looking to make a move here and you want to come visit, I would highly recommend taking a look at Decatur between the city of Decatur schools, as well as all the restaurants. And of course, the affordable housing makes it a great option. There's plenty to do though. There's a history museum there. There's a ghost tour if you're into that type of thing as well. But again, just tons and tons to do uh, down in Decatur. And it's one of my favorite suburbs. It's one of the cooler little cities, if you will, um, you know, that a lot of people choose to make their home and great access to pretty much everything in North Atlanta. So uh, the next suburb that we're going to cover here is Johns Creek. And again, we talked about, you know, geographically where these are located, but like northeast of Atlanta, um, so about 20 minutes, 25 minutes from downtown um, on a good day with traffic, at least. Um, but Johns Creek, you know, a $348,000 median house price, which has increased significantly. Both Johns Creek and Alfred have seen significant growth there. Um, you know, with the whole work from home, not many people are commuting into the city. Even if you did, it's still 25, 30 minutes max with some traffic. Um, you know, you might get a really, really bad day where it takes you like 45 minutes to get in, but 80% safer than, uh, excuse me, safer than 80% of the cities in Georgia, which is a massive deal. Again, 77, 80% is a great mark there. That's what you're looking for. It's what you want to see. And also the accessibility to, again, concerts and sporting events. Um, you know, you've got Duluth right next door, which has a phenomenal um, and engaging um, indoor and outdoor space there that a lot of concerts and and um, seminars and you know all sorts of things are are held there but just literally right next door in Duluth so uh, dog parks abound there is golf courses there's a ton of private and public courses up that way as well but I think um, honestly Johns Creek is, is growing in popularity a lot more people are finding out about it and uh, therefore a lot more people are moving there and again that average price and medium price is going to continue to go up um, you know, as, as time progresses and as we continue to move on. And then of course, we've got Sandy Springs where I live, where I work and where I play. It's my home base here. Uh, we've lived here for about 11 years. We love it. And again, for all of these same exact reasons, um, you know, at the time when we bought about 11 years ago, it was very, very affordable. Now, not so much. The average price is about $775,000, almost to that $800,000 mark. So relatively speaking, not as affordable, but the proximity to the city is significantly better. So, you know, 15, 20 minutes with some traffic, maybe um, not too terribly far from the city if you still do commute into the city, but the schools, both public and private, as well as um, the proximity to City Springs here being the downtown fabric that kind of holds the city of Sandy Springs together. But you've got major, major corporations here. A lot of Fortune 500 companies that we've talked about in other videos. And again, excuse me, if you haven't, seen the entire playlist of everything Sandy Springs from the development that's happened here to us driving around and showing you all around the city. Make sure that you subscribe, but also go check out that playlist because we have a ton more content coming to you about Sandy Springs since it is where I live, work and play. This has been a huge change over the last three or four years. A lot of corporations, a lot of big businesses, Fortune 500 businesses, especially moving into the Sandy Springs area and making it um, obviously, you know, one of the more desirable locations. Um, again, we talked a little bit about the private schools. There's a ton of private schools here in Sandy Springs, again, for pretty much every taste and flavor that you could want. Um, but as I mentioned, get, to get down to the um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, to get over to Truist Field takes about 10 minutes. So you've got great access to sporting events, to the Chattahoochee River. Um, you know, I think all of that, you know, combined really makes Sandy Springs one of, you know, most people's favorites here. 
uh, just on the north side of the perimeter. And again, kind of straddles the um, perimeter there a little north and a little south, but you can get your your taste either way. But uh, $420,000 is the uh, median price, but again, the average being somewhere in the 700s, almost low 800s at this point. And again, this, this particular article where I'm giving you all this information, I'll include it down uh, in a link here below. But um, a lot of this information is relative to right now. So while we've seen a little change in the summer season here, specific to Atlanta real estate, there's been a little cooling off or a little normalization. Uh, there has not been a whole lot of change as far as buyer activity. Buyers are still out there buying. And if it's priced appropriately, I should say, the homes are flying off the shelf still. The problem is that most agents are not pricing their homes appropriately. And this is across all of North Metro Atlanta. And most homes are seeing price reductions. And so they're chasing the market. They're chasing where the, um, you know, where the, where the ultimate market for that home, for that neighborhood, for that community is going to be. But if you have any questions as, as it relates to that, you can always reach out to us. We'd love to hop on a Zoom, uh, as I said, just like this. You can always call, text, email, whatever's most convenient for you. We just want to make sure that we're delivering you as much good information that you can make a sound financial decision based on this. And uh, we hope that this was helpful. But if it was, leave a comment down below and we'd love to hear from you again. I do respond to comments. I do um, you know, try to engage with people that are reaching out about making their move here to Atlanta. Um, and if, it, if there's a, anything else that we can do for you, if there's another video idea, anything at all, you can shoot us a message or you can just comment down below. We'd love to hear from you though. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.